Now we heard um, already presentations about uh, cross-industry collaboration, about um, technology itself. We heard about ADB2 and watermarking. Finally, we heard about linear ad replacement. And finally, we need to make money out of that. And this is what the next presentation is about. Advertising and other means of monetizing the hybrid approach to television is the title of Ashley Horn's sim uh, presentation from SimpleStream. So I like to welcome you on the stage. So big applause. <laughs> <laughs> It's fine. I know, I know pretty much everyone's asleep from the cauliflower and, and mashed potatoes, so if I see a few yawns, I'll just I'll keep on going to get everyone onto it. <laughs> um, brilliant. Thank you very much. That's the... There we go. Um, so for those that uh, don't know, um, SimpleStream uh, provide video workflows as well as uh, end-user OTT applications. Um, those end-user applications include HPB TV, uh, for which we've been doing a lot of work on um, over the past few years. Um, so the areas that I want to drill into today is monetization on those platforms. What we're finding, and is what I think a lot of um, my colleagues that have been up here and have spoken today have, have talked about, is that subscription is no longer the, the one key to being able to monetize content. Instead, it's a hybrid of using things like uh, ad insertion, as we've just heard from, um, virtualizing channels to reuse VOD content, and then also signposting for things like uh, e-commerce and overlays. And these are the areas that I'm just going to talk about um, for the next 15 minutes or so um, on that. Um, so to start off with, um, this is the, the, the basics, which is uh, advertising itself. So there are two areas that we work with um, in our HPB TV applications. Um, that is client-side advertising and server-side advertising. Uh, we find that uh, server-side advertising is used mostly for live content, and then client-side is used for on-demand. And I'm going to go a little bit into each of those before I start going into some uh, specific use cases. Um, so, uh, server-side uh, ad insertion. As you will see, pretty much everyone that's now done presentations before me has a version of this diagram um, because we're all talking about the same sort of thing. Um, so in the case of the uh, OTT applications that we develop, all of our linear streams come in via IP. Um, so for us, that means that we're taking the linear streams, uh, we're identifying where ad content will have been because a lot of those live streams uh, will already be in use for broadcast. Um, we're using something called uh, SCUTTY markers, SCUTTY 35 markers to identify that ad break, and then we're making an ad request out to an ad server um, for which in our case we can use uh, any, so uh, Google's and Sky, etc. cetera. Um, so we make that call and then we replace it. So the linear stream that we're going to uh, create in the end looks exactly as it would for anyone on broadcast, but in the OTT space this means that we're allowed to then um, uh, target that. The benefit of that means that uh, we have different ads for different users, which is what we all want. The highest CPM rate that you can generate for your advertiser is one that tells them exactly what that user wants to watch and provide back that, uh, that content based on the segmentation. So here we've got two users that are watching exactly the same linear stream in the app, but they're being surfaced different ads in that ad break pod and content. Um, so how does it work? Here's, a, here's something that's really interesting to me. Um, it might be interesting to others or not, but what we're doing is on an IP level, we're identifying that user based on segmentation. So we have information about that IP, we have information about their location, um, and then we also have consent information as well. So for some of our platforms that we work with, we're able to do uh, uh, pop-ups for things like cookies, which means that we can then uh, get in the EU um, GDPR consent, and we can segment those users further, and again, generate a higher CPM rate. And what this means is, um, as you can see in the request that we've got here, a live request is then filled with all of that data, which is then sent to the ad provider, and again, fulfills a greater segmentation of that. Um, the same is true for client-side ad insertion. It's not quite as, as, uh, as fun, in my opinion, as, as server-side. But what we're doing here um, for VOD content uh, on HBB TV applications is uh, calling an ad server, making an ad request, and then performing that usually as a pre-roll or a mid-roll um, predefined in that VOD asset. Again, we're using that using targeted information. 
So we're telling the ad server exactly who that user is uh, as much as we're allowed by that user. And that's, of course, affected by things like uh, being able to log in um, and being able to surface your, your email or, or segmentation. For client-side ad insertion, uh, this tends to be done uh, in the OTT applications and the HPP TV applications that we have by using uh, SDKs or VAST tags, which we can then append all of this information to. Great. So that's the sort of industry standard and the way that we've, everyone's been doing things for a few years. What we're now finding is that that sort of technology is being reutilized in lots of different ways. And a huge one of them that we're seeing is virtual channels. Now, virtual channels um, to us and, and the customers that we work with is taking your VOD archive and creating a 24-7 linear stream within your HBB TV application. And for some users, that is uh, kids' content, whereby you have a 24-7 Halloween stream that runs for two weeks. It might be that you're working with um, uh, an e-commerce provider, a teleshopping provider, that wants specifically a beauty channel. We're taking all of the archive of on-demand content um, and putting it together to create a virtual channel. Very briefly, um, just to go over how precisely this works. So we have all of the on-demand content in a location, or it can be a, a virtual location. We use um, our partnerships with people like Brightco, for example, um, to have all of that content and then to be able to normalize it. Once that's normalized, we then create a playlist. Uh, and that can be 24 hours, or it can be shorter, and we can loop it. Um, so in the case of the beauty channel that I was talking about, they have content for you know, uh, creams and scarves and um, different rings that you can buy. And we have all of that. And you can create little programs out of it and then have a full uh, thematic channel out of it. The benefit of this being is that we can then go back to using the server-side ad insertion that I talked about to start off with. So when we're curating this channel together, in between every single clip, we can put those ad markers. So you're already re-monetizing the content that generally might have just been seen if you'd gone through, say, categories, and then you've gone into a channel, and then you've gone into that beauty asset. But instead, your linear channel can resurface all of that on-demand content and up, uh, improve the monetization of it and increase the opportunity to see monetization on it. As well as being able to uh, create the, the channels itself and put that within our HBB TV applications, we're also seeing a big uptake of fast channels. So these are, uh, are customers that have a HBB TV uh, app, have a linear channel, and want to keep on distributing. So to be able to then send channels that are being used in multiple places, say you want to send it to Samsung TV+, Plus, um, you want to have it in your app, you want to have it in, in a HBB TV environment, utilizing the same stream for all of that because of the level of compliance that we can provide is, is a really high option for monetization. And in these cases, we can provide the ad service or you can have an agreement whereby it works with, uh, with the ad service provided by someone like Samsung. So it's a really unique way to additionally monetize that. The other thing that we've also seen for these virtual channels is by putting Barker channels inside HBB TV applications. So where a lot of the applications that we see tend to have a, you know, a big featured carousel or a, a home page telling you about what's been on recently, having something that's automatically playing allows you to continually monetize that content and have more eyeballs on it. So, Going even further down this route of virtual channels, uh, we come to uh, dynamic overlays. What we're seeing in both sports uh, and with teleshopping specifically, who are coming into this market, is that they want to be able to interact with those users dynamically. So this might be that there's um, a match ongoing uh, and you want to update them on the scores, or uh, and a use case that I'll get to on shortly, is that there's content that you're trying to sell. So we work with customers like uh, QVC, and there's an Australian uh, teleshopping channel I'll get to at the end as part of a, a use case. But we're overlaying all of that content to allow you to dynamically show stock levels, information about that content. And then we also work with sports companies whereby if you're watching someone and they're, they're running around in kit and you want to be able to buy it, you can dynamically show that to users. 
very quickly on, on how that works. So this is all done uh, server side. So this is all done within the cloud so that by the time it gets to the application, it's all seen as one piece of linear content. Um, it's the same as dynamic ad insertion, but here we're taking uh, overlays that are, are dynamic based on the data that we have and providing it on top of it so that it always looks as if it's the broadcast channel, but you can display it within your HPB TV application that you got to via your red button. And suddenly the opportunities of this become huge because you might have a single channel with on your device, but if you then open up your um, HPB TV uh, application, you can have 10 channels, each one dynamically providing content, and each one thematic based on um, your previous archive. Um, so for the last few minutes, I just want to talk about some actual use cases, because what I talk about is all great, but it might be that I talk about it, it's never actually been done. Whereas um, we have you know, three customers that we're working with, which I think is really interesting within this area and within this industry. Um, with all of them, uh, and I will say this for anyone that we, we end up talking to, everything is now a hybrid monetization model. No one is doing just subscription or just advertising, Netflix being a great example of that in the past few months. Everyone wants to do it in multiple different ways. And that's what we're seeing with these customers. Um, so the first one is a company that we work with uh, called VOD365. Um, they have uh, reach in, in the UK and Australia, and they provide predominantly kids' content. Um, so for them, uh, they're doing client-side ad insertion um, on all of their on-demand content. So I'm sorry if you watch Peppa Pig in the UK with your children and you have to watch an ad first about Haribo. That was us. I'm very sorry. Um, but they also have a Barker channel, which is on a continuous auto loop, and that is just providing us ad content interspliced with um, uh, trailers for the videos themselves. So you get advertised as soon as you hit that homepage, and then as you go into the VOD content, you get more advertise, uh, advertisements based on those pods. And we try and make it so that the customers you know, still want to watch the content and aren't pushed away from it, but there are enough opportunities for those advertisers. Second one is TVSN, um, which I've uh, mentioned a couple of times. Um, and these guys are an Australian-based teleshopping company. And they have uh, HPB TV and uh, mobile devices, um, as far as the platforms go. Uh, with these guys, what we're doing is providing that dynamic overlay based on all of their stock information. Um, and then additionally, we're creating these channels. So they have about three or four now, beauty, jewelry, and those go alongside their normal broadcast channel. And the overlay that they have matches, in my, in my opinion, um, is slightly better than what they have in the broadcast world as well. Um, so you can see all of those in their applications and you can scroll through to them. And it's all thematic content that they're uh, scheduling team have put together based on the content that they've got available. And then the last one is uh, GB News. Um, so uh, with GB News, we provide uh, their entire application suite, and we are doing a server-side dynamic ad replacement for them um, in the IP streams. So they have broadcast streams that um, probably a lot of you may or may not have watched. Um, and for those, we take those streams, we highlight the markers whereby they've got broadcast-based ads, we then remove them for the IP version, and then we replace them with a targeted uh, server-side ad replacement um, for those users to then go out to all of their applications, including the HPB TV apps that we have for them. Um, so that's everything I have to say. Uh, hopefully that was useful to give you some uh, idea of where we're seeing the market and where some of our customers uh, are moving to uh, and some of the, the products that we're developing alongside them um, as we're finding that a particularly interesting area to work in. Uh, if anyone has any questions, I'm part of the Q&A afterwards and also I'll be around for the next couple of days. So please feel free to come and chat. Otherwise, thank you very much.